welcome back to my channel. I am going to be talking to you today about, oh, I can't hold them, my September TBR. There's a lot of books I want to try to plan on reading this month and next month. I don't know if I will actually get through all of these beauty books, but, um, here's to trying. <laughs> Alright, the first, I don't know if it'll be the first one that I'll pick up this month, but it'll definitely be in September sometime, which I've had on my bookshelves forever. I'm getting around to them, I promise, eventually, she says. Don't judge me. But that book is going to be This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. Now, I don't know a whole lot about it, but on the back, this is what has me. Corsal, Cors... Well, sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Tooth and Claw, Shadow and Bone will eat you raw. Malachi, Malachi, Sharp and Sly, Smile and Bite, and Drink You Dry. Sun a day, sun a day, Isaac Hoyle. Sing you a song, still your soul. Monsters, monsters, big and small, they're gonna come and eat you all. Like, that has me intrigued. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to dive into this one. And just look how gorgeous the cover is. And then, moving on, if I get around to that, I will definitely be continuing in our dark duet also by Victoria Schwab and again the world is breaking and so are they like I haven't heard too much about it but they both sound really good Kate Harker isn't afraid of monsters she hunts them and she's good at it August Flynn one earned to be human but no longer he has part to play, and he will play it, no matter the cost. The war has begun. The monsters are winning. Kate will have to return to Verity. August will have to let her back in. And a new monster is waiting. One that feeds on chaos and brings out its victims, inner demons, which will be harder to conquer. The monsters they face or the monsters within. And that is our dark duet. I'm so excited getting the Halloween reads on. The next book I've also had on my shelves for a really long time and it hasn't been around on booktube, at least I haven't seen a whole lot of people talk about it, and that is Witch World by Christopher Pike. I haven't really, like I said, I haven't really heard much of this, but it sounds good. <clears throat> Heading off for a weekend in Las Vegas with her friends, Jessie Rally has only one worry, how to make it through the road trip in the same car with her ex, Jimmy Kelter. The guy who broke her heart five months ago when he dumped her for no reason. The guy who's finally ready to tell her why he did it because he wants her back. What? <laughs> but what Jessie doesn't realize is that Jimmy is the least of her problems. In Las Vegas, she meets Russ, a mis memorizing stranger who shows her how to gamble and who never seems to lose. Curious, Jesse wants to know his secret. And in response, alone with her in his hotel room, he teaches her a game that ha that opens a door to another reality. To which world? Jesse discovers that she's stumbled into a world where some people can do the impossible and others may not even be human. For a time, she fears she's lost her mind. Are they really witches? Is she one of them? Number one best-selling author Christopher Pike offers up another classic edge-of-your-seat thrill ride that keeps you guessing right until the last page. 
And that is Witch World. Doesn't the cover look somewhat pretty and it's red on the front and back? Like, I like that. I don't know what it looks like naked, but probably nothing. Yeah, nothing. Black cover underneath. Alright. The next two books I'm going to talk about, I've heard a little bit here on BookTube. Not a much, but a little bit. But that is The Black Witch by Lori Forrest. Some echo of her dark power courses through my veins, waiting to be released. Now this sounds really good. A new black witch will rise, her powers vast beyond imagining. Eleanor, if I'm pronouncing any of these words wrong, I'm so sorry, I do try my best. Eleanor Gardner is the granddaughter of the last precise black witch, Cornissa Gardner, who drove back the enemy forces who saved the guardian people during the Relim War. But, while she is absolute spitting image of her famous grandmother, Lauren is utter devoid of power in a society that prizes a magical ability above all else. When she is granted the opportunity to sorry, opportunity to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an Afro Carrie, Eleanor, or Elorn, however you want to say her name, we'll just call her Ellen, joins her brothers at the Protectress Vaporax University to embrace a destiny of her own, free from the shadow of her grandmother's legacy, but she soon realizes that the university which emits all manner of people, including the fire-wielding winged Ericals, the sworn enemies of all guardians, and a treacherous place for a, gar for a granddaughter of the Black Witch. As evil looms on the horizon and the pressure to live up to her heritage builds, everything Ellen thought she knew will be challenged and torn away her best hope of survival may be among the most unlikely band of misfits if only she can find the courage to trust those she's been taught to hate and fear that is the black witch like i said it sounds interesting and it has my favorite deckled edges that i like in a book so um Yes. And if I manage to get to that, I will try to get to the sequel. The keyword is try here, folks. Try. And that is also the Iron Flower, which includes Dark Forces Are On the Rise of Sweeping Sequel to the Black Witch by critically acclaimed author Lori Forrest. Ellen Gardner and her friends were only seeking to right a few wrongs. Then, a few wrongs, sorry, when they rescued a skilly and fe freed a military dragon. Ooh, dragon, hello. The last thing they expected was to be thrust into a realm wide underground resistance against the gardening conquest. And that is all I will be giving into this one, because it is the second book into the series, so don't want to know oh, too much about it. like to go into my books somewhat blind-ish. Alright. Next set of books. We ain't done yet. Like I said, I don't know if I will get to all of these books this month. I want to plan a trying to because I want to get in the mood for Halloween, of course. So, the next book I want to try to read is House of Theories by Madeline Rooks. I've also had this on my TBR for a really long time. They come here to die. Dun dun dun. 
Louisa Denton has nowhere to go. Alone and afraid, she has fled a mutual English boarding school where punishment was the lesson of the day. When she meets an old woman who offers her employment as a maid at a boarding house, Louisa Sorry again if I'm butchering these names. I try my best. Thinks she has been saved. But soon after her arrival at Cole Thistle House, Louisa begins to realize that the house mysterious owner, Mr. Morningside, is providing much more than lodging for his guest. Far from a place of rest, the house is a place of judgment. And Mr. Morningside and his staff are meant to execute their own brand of dark justice on those who are past being saved. Louisa begins to fear for a young man named Lee, who is not like other guests. He is charismatic and kind, and Louisa knows that it may be up to her to save him from an unlimited judgment. But... In this house of destructions and lies, how can Louisa be sure whom to trust? Now that definitely sounds good, and it's got Halloween vibes, and it looks like it has uh, a little bit of illustrations in it. Not much, but just a little tiny bit, but it sounds good. And... If I get through that one as well, I'll pick up the second book, which is A Court of Shadows. We won't go into too much detail about it because, again, it is the second book of the series. All I will say is, they remain after death. That's what it says on the cover. Alright. The next one I have down, I don't actually have a physical copy of it yet, but it does come out Tuesday, and that is Dark Dawn, which is the third book into the series of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I'm excited to see what happens to Mia, to Mr. Kindly, see where her and her little brother goes. I just, I can't wait. I'm super pumped for that book. Like I said, it is the third book in the series, so if you don't... Anyways, the last book I was talking about before I got cut off was Dark Dawn, which is, the, like I said, the third book into the series that I am looking forward to reading, so... Yay! Alright, the next book we're going to talk about is Fear Streets. There are two books in this one. But the one I want to try to read is a Don't Stay Up Late by R.L. Stein. In Don't Stay Up Late, Lisa is plagued by nightmares and humiliations after a horrible accident that landed her in the hospital for weeks. Lisa is happy to take a babysitting job to get her mind off the terrible events of the past. But then her friends begin dying one by one. Are Lisa's nightmares coming true? With a twice the scares and twice the fun, longtime Fear Street fans and the newcomers to the series won't be able to put this one down. I read a couple of Fear Street books back in high school. Can't remember which ones for sure, but I know I really enjoyed them. And I'm going to change this angle, so hold on. Okay, and we're back. Sort of. But we're back. Alright, the other book I'm going to be talking about is, of course, another Fear Street book. I have quite a few Fear Street books on here, so don't be surprised. This, is the, this isn't the last one, but I have a book called Return to Fear Street, The Wrong Girl, also by R.L. Stein. The coverage looks so gorgeous. Poppy Miller swears she will get payback for Jax Saber's cruel prank that humili humiliated her in front of all of her friends. Then her classmates starting turning up dead. All eyes are on Poppy. Is Poppy being framed or 
did the kids of Shady Side High mess with the wrong girl? In this all new uh, Fear Street story, only one thing's for sure: someone is is out for deadly revenge. Oh, and just look at the cover; like I like it. All right, moving on. Then the other book I definitely want to try to get to is a book called Sleeping Beauties by. Stephen Keane and Owen Keane. Yes, this is massive, but I think I can find an audiobook for it so I can get through this all because there's just, I don't know if there's any way at all, but in a future so real and near, it might be now, something happens to women who go to sleep. They become shrouded in a cocoon-like gaze. If they are waking, awakened, if the gods wrapping their bodies is disturbed or violated, the women become fearful and spectacularly violent. And while they sleep, they go to another place, a better place, where harmony prevails and conflicts is rare. One woman, the mysterious Eva Black, is immune to the blessing or the curse of the sleeping disease. Is Eve a medical ignominy to be studied, or is she a demon who must be slain, abandoned, left to their increasingly primal urges? The men divide into warning factions, some wanting to kill Eve some to save her. Others exploit the chaos to wreck their own advantages on new enemies. All turn to violence in a suddenly all-male world. Set in a small Papuan town whose primary employer is a woman's prison, Sleeping Beauties is a wildly proactive, glorious, dramatic father-son collaboration that feels protectively urgent and relevant today. That's a lot of words, but um, overall, it sounds amazing. And it's written by Stephen Keene and Owen Keene. I've never read anything by Owen Keene, but I have by Stephen Keene, and I like some of his work, so yes for Sleeping Beauties. I'm hoping to get through all these books because they sound amazing. Oh, and I skipped a book. Alright. The other one I've also had on my TBR for a really long time. I say a long time because it feels like a long time. But it is The Creeping by Alexandra Sorori. Not sure if I said that correctly, but um, we're going to roll with it. Okay? Okay. If you hunt for a monstrous you will find them. A haunting modern day folktale in the darkest scene of the world. And then, 11 years ago, Stella and Jeannie disappeared. Only Stella came back. Now all she wants is a summer full of cold days, friends, and her gorgeous crush until a fresh corpse leads to Stella down a path of aging evil and secrets. Stella believes remembering what happened to Jeannie will save her. It won't. She used to know better than to believe in what slinks through the shadows. Not anymore. And that is the creeping and it's also really short. And I'm excited for all of these books you guys. Like these, like I said, sound amazing. Another book I've also had on my TBR for, like I said, feels like a long time, but that's because it's just me. And that is Thirteen Days of Midnight by Leo Hunt. Luke Manchet just received a lousy inheritance. His father's collection of vengeful spirits. And they like nothing better than for Luke to join their ghostly ranks. 
<clears throat> when Luke mentions in extravagant, sorry, father dies suddenly, he leaves his son a dark inheritance. A host of eight unique, powerful, and restless spirits. Unfortunately, Luke has no clue how to manage them, which the ghost figure out pretty quickly. Armed with only his father's indespectable notes and a locked copy of the Book of Eight, Luke struggles to adapt to his new role as near chromancer. Meanwhile, the increasingly be bell in wow. <laughs> Words are hard, you guys. Bell Ill Grint's host mutinies, possesses Luke's mother, and forces him out of his own house. Halloween night, Halloween, the night when ghosts reach the height of their power, is fast approaching. Luke knows his host is planning something far more than trick than treat. With the help of school outcast Eliza Moss, who knows a bit about ghosts herself, Luke has just 13 days to uncover the closely guarded secrets of black magic and send his unique spirits to the internal rest. And if you thought it was going to be easy, you'd be dead wrong. That actually sounds super good. Am I right? And just like, look at that cover. So gorgeous. Okay. They're all gorgeous. What are we saying here? <laughs> Alright. The next hopeful book I also want to try to get to is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. Now, the only thing I know about this one is that, it, of course, magic. Love that in a book. And it's like a time travel, and it's set in like an old time New York. So, stop the magician, steal the book, save the future. And that's all I'm really going to say about this one. I am so excited to get to it. I'm going to try to start it tomorrow, which is Sunday. I have the audiobook for it, so I am definitely going to be reading this one first. And this cover of the snakes, if you guys have seen, um, I'm trying to think of the movie. I can't think of it. But where they have this, and they can use it for, like, wishes? <sighs> the never-ending story. Why couldn't I think of that? Wow. But it reminds me of that, where, like, they can make wishes. I don't know if it's, like, a sh the shape of a snake. But that's what this reminds me of, honestly. Okay. Moving on. The next book I definitely had on my TBR for a little while as well is Dream Fall by Amy Plume. They wanted dreams. What they got were nightmares. I try to lift an arm. My fingers shake. My hand rises. An inch from the mattress, but that is as far as I can move it. My body is made of lead. I am helpless. Unable to run. To hide. Now that sounds really good. Now I only have the first book in this series, but if I end up reading it this month and liking it, I will get the next one. <clears throat> because, you know, that sounds good to me trying to go by somewhat order messing up just a just a smidge the next book I also want to try to get to is Vicious by V.E. Schwab want to try to make it a V.E. Schwab kind of year so we're doing good so far all right Victor and Eli started out as college roommates a brilliant arrogant lonely boys who recognize the same sharpness and ambition in each other. In their senior year, a shared research interested in Adjurlene near-death experiences, and seeing supernatural events reveals an intriguing possibility that under the right conditions, someone could develop extraordinary abilities, but when their 
thesis moves from the academy to the experimental, things go horribly wrong. And like, I just, I love the cover, you guys. I really like skulls as well. And when I seen what was on the cover, I was like, I have to have it. And then the back, oh, beautiful. And then if I manage to finish that one as well, I'm going to pick up the second one, which is Vengeful, also by the E. Schwab. Again, we're not going to go into too much detail. A super-powered collusion of extraordinary minds and, and vengeful intentions. V. E. Schwab returns with the thrilling follow-up to Vicious. So, that's all I'm going to give about this one, because they've both been around for a while. I'm just late to the party. That's all that is. Alright, and another book that also comes out Tuesday that I want to get is uh, Five Dark Fates, and it's to the Three Dark Crowns sequel, and I'm super excited. I still need to read Two Dark Regions, so I will try to add that to this TBR as well. So, there's that. And this is another Fear Street book that I was talking about that I want to try to get to as well which is the lost girl the horror doesn't begin until you find her welcome to fear street you're not afraid are you yes people hear creature howls late at night dark figures form the woods where even the birds seem to frighten to land maybe you've heard of the there's a curse on the street and a curse on those who live here but a secret can't be evil, can it? Can it? I picked up my backpack and there stood Lizzie. Her hand slid down to mine. She laced her fingers with mine. Ouch! I cried out as I felt a sharp pain on the tip of my point finger. Startled, I stepped back from her and saw a silverly pushpin in Lizzie's hand. I raised my finger and watched a tiny droplet of bright red blood appear on the tip. Hey! I cried. What? Lizzie shoved the pin into her own finger and she pulled out as it trickled of blood appeared on her skin. And then she raised her hand and pressed out two bleeding fingers together. She brought her, her face close to mine. Now we're blood, she whispered. That sounds good. They all sound amazing. <coughs> and the last and final book that we have on this TBR, if I get to all 20 of these books, that'd be freaking amazing, is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristio. Basically, it's a retelling of The Little Mermaid, I believe. I have a heart for every year I've been alive. There you are. There are 17 hidden in the sand of my bedroom. Every so often I claw through a shingle just to check if they're still there. Buried deep and bloody, I count each of them so I can be sure none were stolen in the night. It's not such an odd fear to have. Hearts are power, and if there's one thing my kind craves more than ocean, it's power. Now, like I said, I don't know if I will get through all 20 of these books next month. That would be awesome. I'd be on my A-game. But that is all I have to chat about for my September TBR video. Sorry, there's like a really long and short clips into this and me moving around a little bit. But, yeah, that's all I have for this month so far. And if you guys are new here, go ahead and, you know... Hit that subscribe button right down there because you'll know you want to. And hit the notification bell so you won't miss further videos from me. And I will also be making a TBR video for October. And if you guys don't already know, I have a Hocus Pocus readathon in October. Starting October 1st through the 13th. So if you guys want to participate in that, there's a video on my channel about it. And we do have a Twitter as well. You definitely want to follow along, of course. 
And, yeah, that's basically all I have. I'm rambling at this point, but that's what I like to do. I ramble just a little bit. But if you made it through this video, comment down below a skeleton emoji. Because that is really cool. <laughs> and, yeah. That's all I got for now. And I will see you guys in my next one. Goodbye!